Hey folks, it's Tom, a frugal prepper. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, some things you might see on your peppers early in the season. Um, and so this is a pretty prime example. We see this new growth leaf here. It's a little brown. It's got some bumps. It's kind of deformed. It's wrinkled up. It doesn't look quite right. Um, and uh, you'll go get your pepper plants from your favorite nursery or you'll move your seedlings from outdoors to indoors and you'll be wondering what's going on is this a deficiency is this some kind of disease um, what I do wrong and why don't the old leaves that it originally had have that okay um, I see this question no less than a hundred times every uh, planting season and uh, so I, and I used to wonder about this myself so I really started to do some reading about calcium and how calcium is distributed within plants. Um, so calcium is a mineral uh, that all plants need to form cells. And uh, it moves it up from the soil, from the roots, and moves it into the part of the plant that needs it at the time. Uh, plants typically would like to uh, store a lot of sugar during the day, and a lot of times plants do the majority of their actual growing at nighttime. Um, and uh, some plants are more sensitive to being able to move calcium in colder, cooler temperatures than others, and peppers are particularly sensitive to it. Uh, tomatoes, a little bit. Um, so this is actually, you know, this is a calcium deficiency when your leaves do this. This means that when this leaf was forming, when it was growing, when it was first setting, it plant didn't have enough calcium for the cells um, and so they were deformed. They didn't grow them right. Um, does this mean there's not enough calcium in my soil? No. Same reason you get black hearts on celery. The same reason you get uh, sometimes your first peanuts on peanuts are don't have a pea in them, right? Or a nut or whatever you want to call it. Um, and same reason some of your first tomatoes will have blossom end rot. It's not because you're low on calcium. In fact, if you cal calcium there is such a thing as calcium toxicity. You don't want to put too much calcium down. Um, so the reason that this happens is because calcium is a mineral in the plant and it can't move it from one area of the plant to the other. So this leaf that's already made, that calcium is set in that leaf. It can't take some calcium from there and move it here. So what you have to understand is plants do a lot of their growing at night. Believe it or not, they store up sugars and pull in minerals and nutrients and then at night when it's cool is a lot of times when they actually start to produce new cells and a lot of new growth. Um, and so that's when the calcium has to be available. Uh, the one thing that affects the calcium being able to be transported from the root system up to the top of the plant is the temperature. Okay, and cooler temperatures when it's still in the 50s, 60s, or, or, or you know, 50s to mid 60s. Um, overnight temps and you're having these 70 and 80 70 to 80 temps during the day you have a lot of heat a lot of sun and it's ready to produce at night the temperature drops and it can't get the calcium where it needs to go so early in the season this is pretty normal this is why until we get maybe into July if any of my tomatoes set a blossom and set a fruit I will pluck it off um, I'll do the same if the peppers get a bloom I'll pluck them off uh, because the chance of uh, blossom end rot, uh, on tomatoes especially, is um, pretty good. And now you've put all that energy into making a tomato that's going to have blossom end rot that you're going to throw away. So this is pretty normal. Uh, this isn't unusual. And this happens because you get your plants. They've been in a nice warm greenhouse. They've been growing great. You take them, you put them outside where they're going to have colder nights. They're trying to grow and make new leaves and get bigger. And they can't transport the calcium from the soil. And they can't store calcium in another part of the plant and move it. So I just thought I would share that because I see that a lot. And I see a lot of people flip out about that. Usually your hotter peppers will tend to do it. That's why I'm thinking this, these... Uh, this one with the actual brown blotches in it that's real bad those are the surprise peppers these last four those are probably pretty hot see my tomato plants are about a foot and a half they're getting a couple of them's getting close to two feet tall now um, it's going to be time for their first pruning get those bottom branches off and prune any suckers and start getting them around the strings here this weekend 
Um, so that's all good. Um, the cantaloupe seeds did not germinate. I had to replant. Um, they've been in two days. I'm looking for signs of germination there. Um, other stuff, I have corns, just, just little shoots starting to come up along here. So my sweet corn's coming up. Um, see, my uh, potatoes are breaking the ground. So that's all good. Uh, and I've got beans coming up. Um, some of them have, haven't broke the soil or some's just starting to, but they're germinating. I'm happy with that. You expect to start seeing some germination by day five, and this is day five. So, um, and these are the Roma and Amish, three Amish pasta tomatoes here. They look happy. So, that's how things are going. I'm working on getting an electric fence put up around the garden here. That's going to be a this weekend project. But I wanted to cover that about calcium and um, just put that out there because a lot of people ask these questions about pepper plants, especially um, they're more sensitive. Peppers really like the hot weather. And um, they're, they're early in the spring with these overnight temps. It's not uncommon to have some curled leaves. Keep, keep watering them, feeding them, and let them grow. They'll grow out of it as the temperatures come up. This is Tom, your frugal prepper. I'll talk to you all later.